What is up guys, I'm KBHD here with your first look at the most anticipated phone of 2019 so far from Samsung. And uh, turns out it's actually three phones. There is the Samsung Galaxy S10, the Galaxy S10 Plus, and the Galaxy S10e. So three new phones, each of them familiar in many ways as a Samsung phone, but each of them also has their differences. So first off here, I'm gonna focus on the two main ones, I'd say the flagships, the Galaxy S10 and the Galaxy S10 Plus. And right off the bat, they do look pretty good. I mean, I never thought Samsung phones were ugly at all, but these look quite nice. We kind of saw this coming from the renders. So first off, the new stuff for the Galaxy S10, there are three main improvements and then a lot of small ones. But the main ones are the display, the fingerprint sensor, and the cameras. So the new display, it's simple, you can see it. It's got a 6.1 inch display for the S10 and a 6.4 inch display in the S10 Plus. And they continue the tradition of Samsung having literally the best displays in any phone for a couple years running now. And it continues to get even better. So you have a 90 plus percent screen to body ratio now. And it's still a super high resolution with a 19 by nine tall aspect ratio, but it's now also HDR 10 plus certified. And they've changed the name a little bit. They're calling it a, a next level infinity display, but still it goes right up to the very edges. And you have of course your camera cutout right there in the top right corner, like we've seen in all the leaks. It is a laser cut hole in the AMOLED panel to precisely cut this hole for just the camera to come through and nothing else. And it's a single 10 megapixel selfie camera for the Galaxy S10, plus an additional depth sensor next to it for the dual cutout in the S10 Plus. So no ultra wide selfie camera, sadly. But yeah, I guess now seeing that cutout in person here instead of just in a leak or a render, it doesn't really shock me anymore. Like we've seen this design start to come up. We saw it in that one Honor phone, but it was on the left hand side. This time it's on the right. It seems like Samsung's cutout is maybe a little, just a little bit smaller than Honor's. It's not too distracting. Uh, it pushes the battery and the signal indicators over from the right edge. And of course, Samsung will cleverly include a bunch of wallpapers that slightly darken the top right hand corner to make the hole punch less jarring. And they also draw this fancy animation around the cutout when you switch to the front facing camera. So I guess they're kind of embracing it. So there it is. Samsung can now say they've technically never done a notch, I guess. All right, so number two, the number two main new thing is the new fingerprint sensor. Galaxy S10 has officially moved to the ultrasonic under the glass fingerprint reader, which is pretty dope. So you see the word ultrasonic in there, and that's not just a, a name they're just making up, that actually means something as far as the technology's use for you and I. So we've had under the glass fingerprint sensors in phones before, namely in phones like the OnePlus 6T, but they've mostly been optical fingerprint sensors, shining a light on your finger to actually read your fingerprint. These ultrasonic ones don't use that, so they have a couple advantages. Number one, they'll be faster. Number two, they don't need to shine a super bright light on your finger to read it, so it'll be way less annoying in dim light or at night. And number three, it can read the fingerprints before waking up the display at all. That is a pretty sweet feature that I'm really happy about. So the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, I'm looking forward to using. So then that brings us to number three, the third main new feature with Galaxy S10, which is the cameras, plural. So Galaxy S10 now has the triple cameras on the back. So Samsung is finally doing the three different focal lengths, one main camera, one telephoto, and one super wide, which is sick. I've been waiting for that, and I hope Apple gets on this train next. So Samsung has had for a while one of the best cameras in any smartphone. Uh, so fingers crossed this continued improvement and image quality and color science keeps going. Uh, we'll find out all these things in the full review, so definitely make sure you subscribe to see that when it comes out but the new cameras on the back are already welcome. The main camera is a 12 megapixel sensor, dual aperture f1.5 or 2.4 with OIS. Then the telephoto is also f2.4 and has OIS. And the ultra wide, it doesn't have OIS, but you'll hardly need it at 123 degrees anyway. And it opens up to f2.2. I for one hope everyone adopts some sort of ultra wide camera. I personally love the look. And then in software like Apple and Huawei and LG have done, you can sort of seamlessly zoom between the cameras and it'll switch automatically which camera you're on depending on how far you're zoomed in. It also keeps the intelligent camera modes with the improved scene recognition and all of that. Honestly, it's looking like a winning package in the camera department, but of course we have to test that all to find out. Matter of fact, make sure you're following me on Twitter and also Instagram to see those sample photos of this when I start to get it, because from the day that this video gets uploaded and posted, I'm already gonna start posting sample photos. So you can see those. So that's it for the main changes, but of course, since it's Samsung, they've thrown in a ton 
of other little stuff because that's their style and it's good stuff. So first of all, the batteries are significantly bigger. Galaxy S10 is now a 3,400 milliamp hour battery and Galaxy S10 Plus is now a 4,100 milliamp hour battery. So that's nice. And the specs and materials are variable. So the one constant is Snapdragon 855 through everything. That's great. Then the Galaxy S10 starts at 900 bucks and for that you get eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage but there's also an eight and five 12 version. Then the S10 plus starts at a thousand bucks, which gets you eight gigs of Ram and 128 gigs of storage again. But if you spec it up, S10 plus turns into a ceramic back instead of glass. And then there's an eight by five 12 version or a ridiculous one terabyte model with 12 gigs of Ram. So I don't know if you, maybe you have a habit of, of bragging about how much Ram your phone has to your friends. I don't know what, kind of person would use 12 gigs of RAM, but hey, you can do it now. 12 gigs of RAM in a phone. And let's not forget, Samsung's phones also have expandable storage via micro SD. So you can have a terabyte of internal and a half a terabyte micro SD card. So 1.5 terabytes of memory. So straight off the bat with just that, Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus are looking like some really impressive, obviously well-specced flagships for 2019. And all of that takes us to Samsung's other phone that might kind of get lost in all this, which is Galaxy S10e. Now, I didn't want that to get buried or anything, so I have an entire separate video just on the Galaxy S10e and everything that's new with it and different from these S10s. So you can click here to watch that, or it'll be the first link below that like button, uh, but that's the S10e. Bottom line with it, it's essentially their answer to the iPhone XR. It has a couple of trade-offs, like a regular fingerprint sensor and a slightly smaller display, et cetera, to make that lower price but it doesn't cut off too much and it ends up at 750 bucks. So it's a pretty direct comparison there. And then Samsung also dropped this little bomb on us, the Galaxy S10 5G. Uh, now this we know even less about, we just know it's gonna be a bigger S10 with a 6.7 inch screen and a huge battery and an even bigger price. But also aside from the shots you just saw me get of it, they wouldn't let me record any of it. They wouldn't let me turn it on, the screen doesn't turn on and they wouldn't let me hold it, which leads me to believe that could have easily just been a model of a phone. Uh, that phone doesn't exist yet. It's coming out in allegedly Q2 of 2019, but that'll be a whole separate thing when that comes out. But anyway, yeah, as you can see from the S10 and S10 Plus and from the spec sheets and from holding them, they continue the Samsung tradition of checking all the boxes they possibly can. Still, of course, it has IP68, it has fast charging, fast wireless charging, the headphone jack is still there, it has Wi-Fi 6, the Bixby button, the, yeah, the Bixby button, still there. It's whatever, they check the box. But there's also this feature now called wireless power share, AKA reverse wireless charging. So Samsung gets on board with that too, kind of like we saw with the Huawei Mate 20 Pro earlier. So now Galaxy S10 will be able to enable troll mode, super slow, 4.5 watt Qi wireless charging of other devices. I mean, it's fine that it works. I've said it before, but it's it's pretty gimmicky. I wouldn't want to actually do this unless it's a literal emergency, um, but it's more for accessories like the new Galaxy Buds. They're wireless earbuds that have a Qi wireless charging case. Also word on the street is Apple may be thinking of doing this for the new iPhone with the new AirPods 2, which may have a wireless case, but that's all maybe stuff, we'll see. So finally, to top everything off, there are some new colors. Um, none of them look that amazing to me. I mean, the green's kind of cool, but I'll probably end up going with black. Uh, they're all glass, so they're all gonna get fingerprints. And then of course, you'll notice they're running Samsung's new improved One UI, which is actually visually pretty different from previous versions of Samsung skins. And the main thing you'll notice when using it is it moves a ton of things like menu items and quick toggles and controls to the bottom of the display. So everything is more reachable on these huge phones. And it's just overall more well thought out and well designed than previous Samsung software, at least in my opinion. Then again, some things are also cartoonishly huge and I wish they would be smaller or a bit more subtle or less crazy colorful. I don't know, I'm working on my thoughts on it, but so far it's looking pretty solid. But from my time with the hands-on, that's pretty much it. Honestly, I was impressed. I mean, I like the way the phones look and feel in the hands. So for my 900 bucks or a thousand bucks, I think I'm pretty into it. Of course, the full review will be the tell-all, but what do you think? Is this enough to actually get you to change your mind? Also, this video is brought to you by the newest round of MKBHD apparel. This hoodie is in the latest drop. It is live on the site right now, and it is legitimately the softest hoodie I've ever worn. Like, that's not even a joke in my lifetime. This is the softest one, so pretty big fan. 
Link is below. Anyway, that is it. That's S10 and S10 Plus. Link to the S10e video is below, but feel free to share this video with anyone who'd be curious about Samsung's new 10th generation flagships. Until the next one, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. Peace.